we're going to do something I haven't done before. It literally take you on a journey with me to Europe. Follow me. If you guys need consultation regarding your design, whether it be furniture selection, color selection, layout, or just a chat, you can do so by clicking the Zoom link in the description section below. So I just got back from the Amalfi Coast and I thought what a great thing to do is to share my journey instead of having vlogged while I was there, which I didn't, but I took plenty of photos and plenty of videos. So I'm gonna share what I did in the Amalfi Coast so that if you're going or if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about Italy, this will be the episode for you. So first things first, I flew in from Paris because I had work to do in Paris. So my vacation really started the moment I arrived in Rome. And look at this video. I was so excited to be there. The streets were gorgeous. I hadn't been to Rome in, I want to say, five years. So it was really nice to be back. And I checked into this incredible little hotel. It's a boutique hotel, it was brand new. And it was called um, Roommate Filippo. Don't ask. The name is odd, but the hotel itself was really cute. What I really loved about the way that the hotel had handled the windows was the fact that they had these different colored film that was basically pasted on windows. This is something that any one of us can do in our homes. Let's say you have a giant window, you don't know what to do with it. Well, you can make a film that goes over it and you can make it a little bit more playful. In any event, what I couldn't believe were the amount of people that were in Rome during my visit. This, this was early July, so this has literally just happened, and there were thousands of people everywhere. First thing I did in Rome was jump into the Hotel de Russie. It is probably one of the most beautiful hotels in the world. This hotel is spectacular. And I'm gonna throw up some images here because there is so much to dissect in this hotel. I could dedicate an entire YouTube to it. But if you look at this hotel, it's got an exquisite outdoor sort of veranda, a courtyard where similar to the George Sank where you can sit and you can you know, have your meals. But what's really interesting about Italy that varies drastically from Paris is that the buildings are very similar, except that Italy has a lot of color to it. So you're gonna see a lot of terracottas as you see in the Hotel de Russie, you're gonna see beautiful greens and you're gonna have these yellows and these colors that are basically imposed on these buildings, but the buildings themselves are very classical in, in nature. I really loved the beauty of this hotel because it was just very well appointed. It had, you know, beautiful hand-painted walls in some of the rooms where you would be having breakfast. I mean, if you can stay at Hotel de Russie, it was booked at the time that I wanted to go and it's actually a very small fortune, so I'm glad I didn't get in, but it is one of the best hotels and definitely a place worth a visit. So one of the sites you definitely want to visit is the Fountain of Trevi. It is a known architectural landmark and there are a lot of tourists there, but something that everybody does is that they go to the Trevi Fountain, it's so gorgeous, and then they throw in a euro and they make a wish and their wish I hear comes true. So when I'm in Rome, I am partly a tourist, but I am mostly an interior design observer. For me, it's all about the interior design of these spaces because this is classical architecture at its finest, and I'm going to be literally observing anything and everything that I find. So of course, we're at the Gucci store with my mom on day, I think one, we had to go in there. And what I wanted to point out was the beauty of this store. Now it's got the Harlequin black and white floors. Again, a very traditional flooring that has been used for hundreds of years and of course is being used today in the Gucci store in Italy and in my home, by the way, because that is how classic it is. Also take note when we were on the second floor, the soffits, the way that they are built with their paneling. You also have these rich colors and these rich textures that are on the walls, along with these very geometric patterns on the floor. And this particular space, this Gucci um, showroom, is just breathtaking. It is, I, I don't even know how to describe its beauty other than to show you these videos and these photos, and also point out that how fun it is that they have incorporated these beautiful colors into the staircase. So they have their regular staircase, as you can see it, and then on the risers, they have painted them this really nice terracotta color, which was very much trending on all of Europe, along with pink 
and um, these you know beautiful subtle all in greens and so that's where the inspiration comes from for a lot of my interiors it's just living eating and breathing in these gorgeous spaces the next architectural marvel no it's not a landmark but it's the fendi store again these stores were built many years ago they've been renovated over time but they're true design layout and materials are typically the same ones that have been there for you know hundreds of years so if you look at this fendi store you're going to notice this gorgeous staircase that is this burgundy-esque uh, marble with white veining and the way that it just wraps around the staircase is to die for so i did want to point that out so this burgundy marble really has a great sense of depth to it and richness and the fact that they picked up some of that red marble and placed it on the handrails I thought was pretty genius along with the walls that are literally lined in limestone and limestone is a very hot and trending material right now but it is again something that is very very timeless let's not forget the LED lights that literally continue through the outer edges of the staircase to illuminate the staircase and this would look incredible um, in any home but also in any commercial project. It would be a crime if I didn't talk about this gorgeous brass console table that I stumbled into while at Fendi. Shout out to Rocco Ristorante. It is one of the best little Italian spots that we researched and went to so I highly recommend it when you're in Rome. It is handmade pastas, handmade meatballs, everything was divine, and the menu changes every day depending on the fresh ingredients that they stumble upon at the market. So while in Rome, we thought it would be a very good idea to spontaneously go to LMS and see if we can get any bags. So this was more of a test than anything else. We stood in line, they gave us these fun little orange that we got to keep fans, and it was really hot, so everyone was getting water and they were fanning themselves, and then we waited in the line, I wanna say for an hour, and then we decided to give up when we found out exactly what was happening inside. So what's happening at LMS right now in Italy is that, you know, unless you have a long relationship, you're not getting a bag. But if you wanted to make a wish, you can make a wish for a bag. And if the bag that you wish for matches with the description of the bag that happens to arrive at some point within that 365 day period, then that would be a match and you would get called. What they didn't tell us until the very end, which is why we left the line, was that you have to be an Italian citizen in order to make this wish. So I don't even know why we stood in line, but it was fun because we were just um, having a good time anyway. So at this point, my husband, Devin, was so tired of following me from store to store that he found a friend with a pool and off he went. So while he was pooling, we decided to go to the Bulgari store, not to buy jewelry, funny enough, but really to observe the beauty of the store. This is the second Bulgari store to have ever opened and it opened in the 1800s. You're not gonna believe how gorgeous this is. So this store has been around since the 1800s. I kid you not, the building of course far longer, but the way that this store is designed is really just awe inspiring. There is more marble in the small square footage than I've ever seen. They have these really interesting half domed ceilings that are made of glass. Similar to the Miami Revised class of the 80s, but of course this is far more sophisticated, but just to give you an idea of how they have uh, lined the ceiling of the atrium, I should say, of the Bulgari store. The marble pieces that are in the store, the, the tables are one of the most um, beautifully hand-carved pieces of marble I have seen to date. And they happen to have an exhibition of all of the jewelry pieces from the 70s. So this is 70s Bulgari uh, that is, um, that's on exhibition now. They're not for sale, but this is an exhibition of these gorgeous, beautiful, original, incredible pieces that you can see in this video. One of the days while in Rome, we went to an area called Trastevere. And Trastevere is a working class bohemian type of um, village, which has a lot of beautiful and rich history. Italy has gone through, as you can imagine, a bit of a beating with um, COVID. So there was a lot of graffiti, but of course, even the graffiti was beautiful because everything that's in Italy is so monumentally gorgeous that you just can't help staring at it. So we made our way down the coast. We rented a car and we ended up in Sorrento, which is where we spent most the majority of our time. 
and we rented an Airbnb because my entire family was there other than my kids who had no interest in coming. That'll happen when they go to college. But of course, my, uh, my mom was there, my sister, my nieces, nephews. Let's just say there were a lot of us there and we rented this beautiful house overlooking the water. And Sorrento was a town that I had never visited before. And what's really interesting about Sorrento, which is different from the northern part of Italy, if you're going to Lake Como or any other of those areas, is that there's, you have these massive cliffs. And these massive cliffs surround the city. So in order to get to the beach, you have to get on this elevator and you'll go down what I would say would be an eight or 10 story building. You go down that far and then you're going to traverse these ancient corridors that are literally carved out of these gorgeous mountains in order to get to the beach. And it's so awe-inspiring. I can't even explain what it feels like when you're in this sort of cave and you're walking towards the beach. And then when you finally get to the beach, you're like in heaven. While in Sorrento, we also visited the beautiful town of Il Positano. And Il Positano is a tiny, tiny, tiny town where the only way to get in and out of this town would be to drive on these very narrow cliffs. You finally get to the town and then you have to probably walk about 300 steps down and then another 300 steps up to get in and out of the town. So it is quite an adventure and you really have to be ready for it and you need to be wearing the right shoes because you can literally kill yourself in Positano. But the food was amazing. We went to a very well-known restaurant in Positano called Che Black and we had the best time. We had a lot of seafood was consumed during this trip and a lot of walking. I'd say on average, we were walking about 16,000 steps, discovering all the little stores, discovering all the beautiful little streets and the beautiful towns and everything there is to um, stumble into in Italy. And finally, the best part of the trip was Capri. I have to say that Capri is one of those islands that if you haven't been to, should be on your bucket list. It is tiny, tiny, but it is definitely worth the visit. What really stood out about Capri more than any other city in Italy for me was the magnificent views when you're standing there. It's almost unworldly in a way. The moon was in its full moon stage and was just shining on the Mediterranean and just the breathtaking views of these rocky mountains near the beaches were just insane. We were lucky enough to go to all these little fun beaches. We went to Irocchio one day. We also went to the Ristorante da Paulino, which a lot of you have seen or heard of or have been to, and that's the restaurant with the lemons. I can't tell you how fun that was. Literally the entire restaurant is lined in lemon trees and lemon vines, and the food is incredible, impeccably done not to mention the dessert room. Now the dessert room in the Da Paolino is probably one of my favorite um, dessert rooms ever. And you get to pick five of your favorite desserts and you get to eat them all in one sitting. So Capri was discovered by the Emperor Augustus in the early parts of the Roman Empire. And he literally made this place his go-to sort of summer destination. So there are so many gorgeous villas and um, destinations that are insane. And that is one of the reasons why Capri is so beautiful because of this gorgeous architecture that has existed for, you know, a very, very long time. So another um, great reason why one must visit Capri is, are the grottos. So the grottos that are these gorgeous lagoons, these caves that are literally carved out of the mountains that are floating in the water. And these grottos are definitely worth a visit by taking a boat ride while in Capri. This concludes my trip to Italy. I did something a little bit out of the box because I wanted to sort of take you guys on my journey. I wish you guys were with me at all times. And I guess that's why people do vlogs, but this was a different way of doing it because I did want to share with you some of these gorgeous moments. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want me to do more of these trip summaries for you. I'd be happy to do them. And I honestly can't wait to see you guys next week on this channel, The Red Elevator.